Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. So I shall be explaining you a scheduling algorithm here in today's session. So whatever were the previous scheduling algorithms, like I think I have explained up till uh, shortest job first. Now the short after the shortest job first algorithm, you have next in the list is the shortest remaining time next. The algorithm is what shortest remaining time ne next. In few of the textbooks, you can see the name as shortest remaining time first. Both means the same. Now this shortest remaining time next is a preemptive version of shortest job first. This you have to remember, this can be the first uh, important feature which you have to always remember. This is preemptive version of SJF. So in the previous session you have written, you have learned the shortest job first SJF that was non preemptive in nature. I think now this is for the first time you are going to learn the preemptive version of any scheduling algorithm. So let us begin here and moreover I said no for any type of algorithm first try to write, out, uh, write on what criteria are you scheduling this algorithm. So it will be easy for you to remember during the revision also. So you can always write the criteria used here is the burst time. If you remember for the previous one the criteria used was the arrival time. Now the criteria used is the burst time and the mode of operation for this is preemptive. So how this preemptive version of SJF works and what exactly because you have learned theoretically the preemptive, the meaning of the preemptive, then here you will be seeing practically exactly when a process gets okay deallocated from a CPU. A question will be asked in this manner, here they have given you a set of six processes. Okay, In the problem statement, they will be giving you what given as a set of six processes P1 to P6, the arrival time for the processes will be given in the problem statement, the burst time will also be given, you are asked to find out the average waiting time, average turnaround time and average response time also they may ask. So I will include here one more column, many a times what will happen no? depending on the marks, the question will be like this. So now we will include even response time in the problem. Okay, you should be always using the Gantt chart so that you will arrive at the uh, values correctly. And the next part is to explain uh, briefly about the or to explain the logic of this algorithm. It is preemptive in nature and the criteria is what the burst time. So what exactly is happening is a process is scheduled. Okay, but the process will not complete its burst time. Meanwhile, after every unit it is checked whether any other process arrived in the ready queue. If the arrived process is having a shorter burst time than the currently running process, then the currently running process will be preempted and the newly arrived process will be allocated to the processor. Once again, the newly all allocated process becomes now what the current process, even that will be executed just for one unit of time and once again it will be checked whether any other process is arrived. Suppose if the previous process which was deallocated, its burst time is lower than the third process that has arrived, then the previous process will first get its turn. So all these things just to I have explained you theoretically, now practically you can see so that you can understand the concept well. The solution to this example will normally start with the Gantt chart, I have already explained you the logic. Let us begin now, start with time 0 and check whether any process has arrived. Yes, P1 has arrived with a burst time 7. Even though P1 has arrived with a burst time 7, you are going to schedule P1 only for one unit of time and you will write the remaining burst time here. That means P1 has got still its spending time as 6. So at 1, at point 1, that is at time 1, sorry, at time 1, you check whether any other process has arrived. See, the, actually the logic says that the process with the uh, smallest burst time should be scheduled first. At time 0, actually when, when you look at the burst time, you have seen, you are seeing that P4 and P6 are having the lowest burst time. But still you cannot schedule that because at time 0, these processes were not available. If they are not available, how will you be able to schedule? So you check here, process P1 has arrived at 0, at time 0, only process that is available is P1. So that is why you are scheduling first P1. Then you stop at time unit 1 and then check, is there any other process that has arrived at one unit, yes, P2 has arrived. So already here P1 was there, now P2 has arrived. P2 has arrived with a burst unit 5 and P1 is already having the pending unit. Lowest is what P2, so P2 will get its turn. Then P2 also you schedule it only for one unit of time. Then what you have to do is stop this and check whether at time 2 uh, is there any other process pending. 
you have scheduled P2, just go back to one step. Uh, P2 you have scheduled, its burst time was 5, you have scheduled for one unit of time. So, the pending unit for P2 is 4. At 2 you are checking, is there any other process that has arrived? Yes, P3 has arrived. So, at 2 P1 was already there, P2 was already there, now P3 has also come. Now, P3's burst time is 3, P1 burst time is 6, P2's burst time is 5. Now, out of these 3, which one is lowest? P3. So, you will schedule P3 now. And P3 also you have to schedule it only for 1 unit of time. So, you will stop at 3. Once you are scheduling P3 for 1 unit of time, P3 value will get updated here. It becomes 2. At time 3, stop and then see whether any other process has arrived. Yes, P4 has arrived. So, at time 3, earlier you had P1, P2, P3. Now, P4 has also come. Updated value I will write down for P3. It is P4 has come with a burst time equal to 1. Out of these 4, which one is lowest? P4. So, you will schedule P4. P4 also you just stop at 1 unit of time. Okay. And there here you, uh, here you check that at time 4, is there any process that has arrived? Yes, P5 has arrived. P5 has arrived with a burst time 2. P4 you have executed for 1 unit of time. That means it becomes 0. P4 has completed its job. No need to keep track of P4 in future. But at time 4, you have to see whether any other process has arrived. Yes, P5 has arrived. So, what you will do? You will write down all the pending processes also. P4 has completed. P5 has come now. Okay. 6, 4, 2. P5 has come with a burst time 2. Okay. At time 4, this is the situation. Here you see... These two processes are having the same burst time. If there is a tie, you have to schedule a process which is having what? The lowest, lowest, uh, uh, you have to schedule a process which has arrived first. So, out of P3 and P5, P3 has arrived first. So, you will schedule P3. P3 you have to schedule only for one unit of time. Okay, update the value for P3. It becomes one now. Okay, for P3. And then at 5, you check is there any other process arrived? Yes, P6 has arrived. So, already you were having how many processes pending at 5? P1 was there, P2 was there, P3 is there, P5 was there. Now, P6 has also come. P6 has come with an arrival time of 1. Already the pending time if you see for P3 it is 1. Okay, for P1 it is 6, no problem, it is more. P2 it is 4 and P5 it is 2. Now, the competition is where between P3 and P6. P3 is also having... One uh, burst time, one unit of burst time remaining, P6 has come with a burst time 1. So, these two, out of these two, the one which has arrived earlier will be scheduled first. So, you have to schedule now here P3. P3 will complete its job at 6. So, you can see here now P3 becomes 0. P3 is also not competing in future. Now, leftover at point 6 is which one? P1, P2, okay, P5, P6 you have scheduled. Now, P6, yeah. So, out of these 4, 6, 4, 2, 1, which is having the lowest burst time? P6. P6 will get its turn. So, P6 burst time becomes 0. P6 has also completed its job. From here onwards, the algorithm becomes quite simpler. You need to keep track. That means, carefully you have to carry out until you uh, see the maximum value of the arrival time in the given list. The given list, the maximum arrival time is 5. Up till here, your job is to keep track properly each and every process pending burst time and compare it with the burst time of the currently arrived process. After this, it becomes very simple. It becomes like shortest job first. So, here you can see out of all these remaining processes, the one which you have scheduled is what? P6 because it has complete. This one P6 is here. I have put a 0. Then after that, which is having the lowest burst time? P5. P5, yes, P5's burst time is 2. P5 will end its job at 9. Okay. And then next, this is also over. Then P2 and P1. Yes, P2 and P1 are remaining. Out of this, the lowest is P2. So, P2 will execute up till 11 because its remaining burst time is not 11, 13. P2 will execute up till 13 because its remaining burst time is 4. Then from here onwards, the last one that is remaining will be P1, which has got a burst time 6. So, it will end at 19. Which one? P6. Sorry, P1. P1 will end at 19. So, this is how you have to carefully carry out this process. From here onwards, filling the values becomes quite simple. Same way you apply the logic, how you carried out earlier. But this is the first time you are coming across what the preemptive type 
So look at the completion time. A process may not get completed immediately. A process may come okay in future also and try to get its job uh, get uh, a process may come in future and get its job completed look here completion time for process p1 is 19 if you see p1 was the first process that has arrived okay but it's completing at the end so this is where you can see the difference between the non preemptive and preemptive p1 completion time is 19 write down here then p2 completion time p2 is completing here okay p2 is completing here p2's completion time is 13 then p3 is completing here 6 then p4 is completing here at time unit 4 fine then let us see p5 yeah, p5 is completing here 9 then p6 is completing its job at 7 so these are the uh, different now similar how you carried out the turnaround time you can write down here turnaround time is always what completion time minus arrival time completion time is for process p1 19 minus 0 19 13 minus 1 12 6 minus 2 4 4 minus 3 1 9 minus 4 5 7 minus 5 2 so this is the values for the turnaround time so what values you got for turnaround time 19 12 uh, 4 1 5 2 for the, all these six processes Similarly, you can carry out for the waiting time. Waiting time is always equal to what? The total turnaround time minus of burst time. Total turnaround time minus of burst time. Burst time is here. Okay. Now, you look here. 19 minus 7. Waiting time is 12. 12 minus 5. How much it will be? 7. Waiting time is 7. 4 minus 3. 1. 1 minus 1. 0. 5 minus 2, 3, 2 minus of 1, 1. So, these are the values for the waiting time. So, waiting time values finally for each of the processes you got as 12, 7, 1, 0, 3, 1. All this time, what you have noticed is when you started calculating the response time, the response time was same as that of the waiting time, where in case of non preemptive. But in case of preemptive, it will be definitely different because preemptive. The process has not completed its job in one go. Okay, At different times, partially it has completed at all different times. You can see here P1 has started with, if you see the waiting time for P1, it has waited for completely 12 units of time. So, but when it got the CPU for the first time becomes what the response time. So, CPU first time, when it got the CPU for the first time after its arrival. So, you can remember in this manner response time equal to CPU's first time minus of what the arrival time. Hope it is visible. Let me focus. Yes. So, response time is CPU first time I am writing or you can use any other proper word here also for the first time when that process got the CPU uh, okay, minus of the arrival time. So, CPU first time, look here, process P1 got at what time? At 0. It has arrived at 0. Response time is 0 for process P1. P2's, uh, P2 got hold of CPU for the first time at 1. It has arrived at 1. Response. P3 got hold of CPU at 2. Its arrival time is 2. 2 minus 2. Response time is 0. Then uh, P4 got hold of CPU at 3. And it has arrived at 3 only. So, 3 minus 3 is 0. Then after that we have to see next process is what P5. P5 got the CPU for the first time at time unit 7. It has arrived at 4. 7 minus 4, 3. Then P6 you just see, yeah, P6 is here. It got, of C, got hold of CPU at time 6 and it has arrived at 5. 6 minus 5, 1. This is how you have to fill the values for the response. So same way you just add up all these numbers. When you add up, the total turnaround time is becoming as 43 here. Okay, add up. And waiting time, the total waiting time is uh, equal to, in this case, it is uh, equal to how much? Add the values 12 plus 7, 19, 20, plus 3, 23 and 24. Okay, 3 plus 1, 4. Response time. So, these formulas are very simple also. Average turnaround time equal to 43 divided by how many processes are there? 6. Okay, you write down 
average waiting time how much it is 24 average uh, what is it response time is 4 divided by 6 43 divided by 6 will be 7.1 here 4 and here 4 divided by 6 will be 0.66 so these are the final values for that means the average values for all these three components basically for any problem these three components are asked average turnaround time average response time average waiting time so you just divide, add up all these numbers it becomes the total value then divide by what the number of processes that are given in the problem statement so, so remember once again the summary i'll give you the criteria is the burst time the burst time is same that means if there is a tie then check if a process has which process has arrived earlier in some cases what will happen no arrival time will also you will get a tie at arrival time both the processes would have arrived at the same time then that time you have to check what which process id is lower so you can see if one just one column you need to go behind if there is a tie between burst time then check if a process has arrived earlier whichever process has arrived earlier you schedule it if there is a tie for the arrival time also suppose if both the processes have arrived at the same time then you go back okay one column behind and check whether a process has got a lower process id lower the number here becomes is the lower process id then schedule that process first so this is all about the preemptive one uh, important observation here is the response time is improved like anything in case of preemptive you can see here the response time is improved but if you look here the waiting time there is no guarantee because a process which has arrived earlier first also has to wait for a more time so this is what is all about the shortest remaining time next algorithm hope this session is useful to you all and also i request my audience to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye take care